patron of the Atlas Convention and Honorable Minister of Higher and Tertiary Education, Innovation, Science and Technology Development, Professor Emon Morwira. Honorable Ministers here present, Your Excellency, the United Nations Resident Coordinator, Ms. Maria Ribeiro. Honorable Deputy Ministers here present, the Director General of Smart Africa, Mr. Lassina Khan, Senior Government Officials here present, Boards and Management of Mining and other state-owned enterprises here present, members of the media, comrades and friends, distinguished guests, all protocol observed. It is with pleasure that I present to you on the Atlas Convention 2021 under the theme Igniting Infinite Possibilities. Innovation and sustainable mining towards attainment of a US dollar 12 billion mining industry for Zimbabwe by the year 2023. Innovation in value addition, increased productivity and employment creation enhanced investment and capacity building for increased exports and forex generation. Innovation-driven and private sector-led economic transformation towards the attainment of Vision uh, 2030 is something that we have committed ourselves as a country to attain and work towards its achievement. Ladies and gentlemen, the Zimbabwean mining sector, which is one of the key mainstays of our economy, will play a significant role in our attainment of a middle income economy society by the year 2030. The mining sector is expected to be the forerunner in the creation of employment infrastructure development, export earnings, and being the most preferred destination for investment inflows. Thus, the success of the government's economic blueprint, the National Development Strategy, NDS1, which will run from the year 2021 to 2025, and our president's National Vision 2030, is mainly premised on the mining sector among other productive sectors of our economy. This means the mining sector will be generating an annual revenue of 12 billion US dollars by the year 2023. This should favor a competitive, industrialized and modernized Zimbabwe by the year 2030 in line with National Development Strategy 1 and the attainment uh, of the vision 2030, which I have said earlier on. Sustainable mining practice create growth of the economy through backward and forward linkages in the economy. Mining is mainly a primary industry that supplies the manufacturing industry of necessary raw materials for production in both the primary and tertiary industries. For example, iron and steel is used in the construction industry, chrome in the car manufacturing and paint industry, lithium in the electric car battery industry, Butchwa mine in Zberengwa in Zimbabwe used to supply our country with iron and steel, and uh, the main company is Zisco with the much needed iron ore, was Wange provided coal for the blast furnace. Mining operations is also led to the creation of urban settlements. Numerous mines in Zimbabwe have evolved into urban settlements since the colonial era. Towns such as Kwekwe, Wange, Gwanda, just to mention a few, are very good examples. Although some of them later closed down and became ghost towns, the role of the mining industry in the urbanization process 
in Zimbabwe is unquestionable. The creation of ghost towns from mining operations due to the finite nature of the resource has further buttressed the emphasis on sustainable mining practice. Mine closure plants have to be set up so that uh, everyone knows what will happen after the resource is depleted. There is this need to transform the mining industry by innovation and sustainable mining towards attainment of a 12 billion mining industry by the year 2023. Innovation in value addition, increased productivity and employment creation, enhanced investment and capacity building for increased value added are the key performance indicators. The introduction of new thinking and the ways of carrying out sustainable mining practices aptly referred to as innovation has seen the application of information technology IT through artificial intelligence practices. Rapid advances in technological innovation, including automation, digitalization, and electrification are having fundamental impact on the mining sector. This has seen machines aiding and or replacing human beings in mining and eliminating dangers associated with the process to humans and greatly reducing accidents in the sector. For example, the use of computerized mining equipment to carry out mining in automated drilling and tunnel boring systems the use of drones and smart sensors by miners for security, monitoring and controlling purposes in extraction and mineral process is one such good example. Innovation in exploration processes has resulted in the upgrading of previously known and unknown and economic mineral resources into economic ones which can be mined profitably and sustainably. Efficiency in beneficiation and value addition has resulted in the discovery and recovery of old and the new associated minerals called secondary and tertiary minerals to back to the primary mineral of interest. For example, the use of satellite scanning in exploration and aeromagnetic service where aeroplanes are used is made us to discover new previously hidden resources. It has also made it possible to save on the capital expenditure during the development and extraction process through effective and efficient ways of processing and the recovery of our minerals. Governments so we have to prepare and respond to these technological innovation shifts in the mining sector. There is this need to ensure government and communities continue to, to achieve a shared value from mining, such as financial benefits of increased efficiencies and productivity. The World Economic Forum, WEF, Estimates that aut autonomous machines will be commonplace by the year 2025. However, governments will need to ensure automation and artificial intelligence do not undermine the shared value efforts such as employment and investment in local communities. Studies have suggested that technological change has contributed to the increase in smart mining and to persistent unemployment in many advanced economies. While process innovation can lower employment rates, product innovation can Im imply the emergence of new firms, new sectors, and thus creation of new jobs. The new thinking in transforming the mining industry was also reflected in the policies of the African Union, such as Africa Mining Vision 2050, 
extractive hub of, 20, of 2009 convention, which was batteries in the Southern African Development Community, SADC, it is 34 the summit in Zimbabwe in 2015 convention, which was also adapted by the First Republic through the Zimbabwe Agenda for Sustainable Social Economic Transformation, ZIMASET, from the year 2013 to 2018, and continues under the Second Republic National Development Strategy 1 and Vision 2030. The emphasis is primarily on beneficiation and value addition. And not only our exports retains, but also as a strategy to promote employment, industrialization, social and economic growth. Its importance to the mining industry is derived from the highlights that the debate in the extractive sector is moving beyond export revenues to beneficiation and value addition. These policy instruments are a step further towards our economic recovery, but there's a need for sufficient policy strategies and the capital to promote effective implementation. Here in Zimbabwe, we do have the resource. Here in Zimbabwe, we do have uh, the technical people, but what we like now is the capital. The Department of uh, Research, Value Addition and Beneficiation was created in the ministry so that we'll be able to implement all the policy instrument that the ministry will be coming out towards this beneficiation drive. That the policy reforms of the First Republic and which was adopted by the Second Republic are meant to stimulate significant mining-led development. Implementation is a key to reviving investment and growth in the mining sector, especially in the current economic setup of the country. Research has shown that beneficiation and the value addition of minerals can also be analyzed from the global value chains framework. The concept of global value chain framework is tied to the World Bank discourse of export-led growth literature on the East Asian miracle. The concept is premised on upgrading of the product by firms to improve technological efficiency and the quality of the final product. Thus, the global value chain framework aims to upgrade product development throughout intersectorial upgrading and to improve access to global markets through design, marketing, and branding of the final product. The insertion of the global value chain framework into product development allows for the process of beneficiation and value addition to take place in, my, in the mining industry and for spin-off benefits into the other sectors of the economy growing it in the process. However, challenges in the global value chains show that they do not always result in upgrading. This is so mostly as multinational companies with economic power have no incentive to transfer or share skills to their supplier, thereby limiting and restricting them from accessing global markets. No wonder why we are now calling for local beneficiation and value addition of our minerals prior to export. The OECD report also notes that small developing countries face the challenge of being logged into low value added phases of the global value chain. And foreign investors operating in isolation with only limited spillover in the domestic economy. Therefore, the important takeaway and possible solution to the GVC analysis in connection with beneficiation 
in the value addition is to place more emphasis on firms participation in national and regional value chains to establish strong linkages and structure before they enter the global markets as being implemented by the government of Zimbabwe, the SADC and the African Union at large. For example, the government of Zimbabwe insisted on local beneficiation of platinum and placed a penalty on all companies that are into platinum mining, uh, that they pay a penalty of 2% if they are to export uh, and beneficiated product. Surprisingly, in 2019, we had uh, a surplus of 61 million US dollars from platinum export after the companies had uh, committed to do partial beneficiation as they committed to build a best metal refinery and a precious metal refinery in the country. This reflected a jump on earnings from the shipment of platinum group metals made as opposed to concentrates. In conclusion, the Atlas Convention 2021 under the theme Igniting Infinite Possibilities is indeed a key platform to annually converge experts for continuous review of economic transformation factors towards the attainment of Zimbabwe's 2030 vision. Innovation and sustainable mining practices, value addition and beneficiation and investment cannot be overemphasized. The attainment of the 12 billion mining sector by the year 2023 and the vision 2030 is largely premised on innovation, sustainable mining practice by the country. Together, it is a journey we are willing to take and have committed to take, and as I have highlighted previously, will be collectively achieved as a country by Zimbabweans through using our locally available resources. I thank you.